One of the biggest stories, and we've been talking about all the biggest stories, and we kind of hit on this a little bit, but I would say one of the biggest stories by far of the college football weekend was really kind of twofold. It was Trevor Lawrence and uh, suddenly finding out that he was not going to be playing against Boston College and now that he's going to be out against Notre Dame, but also the collapse of Michigan under Jim Harbaugh. And I wrote quite a bit about this in my starting 11 column, which I would encourage you guys to uh, to dive into. And I really kind of want to hit on both of these situations right now, if I could, because I think they're the two biggest takeaways in the world of college football. First of all, Trevor Lawrence sitting out for the Notre Dame game is not necessarily the worst thing that can happen for Clemson. Because if you look at Clemson's schedule, even if they lose this weekend at Notre Dame and they're around a five or six point favorite in that game, even if they lose, they're still going to probably get a rematch because if you look at the rest of Clemson's schedule, it's really hard to see them losing multiple games. And so really for the ACC here, as you start to look at the overall playoff picture, and I know this sounds a little bit ridiculous when you say, hey, look at the overall playoff picture because the Pac-12, I'm kind of laughing to myself because the Pac-12 is actually just now coming back to play and many different parts out there, everybody's already sitting around and saying, okay, what's the playoff picture going to look like because we're into November And here the Pac-12 hasn't even managed to play yet. But if you look at Clemson's schedule, they really don't have a lot of challenge left after this Notre Dame game. Uh, They they have, you know, a decent little bit of uh, a a little bit, but not a lot of meat on that bone. They're going to be massive favorites over everybody they have the rest of the schedule. Whereas Notre Dame, which is kind of interesting, Notre Dame, if they beat Clemson, either at the this time of year or in the ACC championship game, they really kind of put themselves into a position to steal that fourth playoff spot because they've got at Boston College, at North Carolina, Syracuse, and at Wake Forest after this game against Clemson. Yes, I know Notre Dame could lose one of those games, but we really kind of have a pretty good sense already of three college football teams. And this was what I was talking about at the end of the first hour. When you look at the college football playoff right now, to me, there are three teams that should be considered prohibitive favorites to be in the college football playoff. Alabama, I think beyond a shadow of a doubt, Alabama is going to be in the college football playoff, as I was talking about in the first hour of the program. I think beyond a shadow of a doubt, Clemson is going to find their way in provided that Trevor Lawrence eventually comes back. That's why that 24-point rally from being at down 28-10 to 10 against Boston College was so important. And then Ohio State. I just, I really don't see anybody with the loss that Michigan just had on the schedule for Ohio State that you even have to be remotely nervous about. So the question becomes, who's going to snag that fourth playoff spot? Well, we basically have eliminated the Big 12. We can put Notre Dame in that mix. We can put Texas A&M. We can put Florida. We can put Georgia. All of those teams, but also Notre Dame, I think is right there kind of hanging on the periphery. And if you're a Pac-12 fan, you want as many different losses to stack up because you're like, hey, what about if one of our teams gets to 7-0 and or thereabouts? Is there any way we could sneak in in Oregon? Or, I'm sorry, USC fans. I don't think it's likely, but USC fans saying, hey, what about us as well? So Clemson being able to get that win over Boston College without Trevor Lawrence was important because I really don't see any way that Clemson's going to lose more than one game. And honestly, if the ACC, if John Swafford, the commissioner, were being honest, he's probably a little bit, I think, rooting for Notre Dame to pull off the win because it puts the ACC in a decent position to potentially get two different teams in because I don't think it's very likely that Notre Dame is going to beat Clemson twice. I think it's very likely that Clemson could beat Notre Dame twice. I don't think if Trevor Lawrence is back for the ACC championship game, there is a very high probability at all of Notre Dame being able to do it twice. All right? So that's one big takeaway. The other biggest takeaway, Jim Harbaugh is just not going to work out. This was a loss 
that even the most ardent Jim Harbaugh defenders on the planet are not even able to argue with me about anymore. I've been on this show. I'm not trying to be difficult on Jim Harbaugh, but if you look at Jim Harbaugh's performance versus Jim Harbaugh's reputation, he has the reputation of being a Nick Saban or an Urban Meyer. The reality is, and I'm sorry, Michigan fans, he's a lot more like Bo Pelini at Nebraska than he is Nick Saban at Alabama or Urban Meyer at Florida or Ohio State. The expectation when he got to Ann Arbor six years ago, he's now in his sixth season, was that he was going to take Michigan to the promised land, that they were going to dominate. They haven't even made the Big Ten championship game yet. And I think if you watch that performance that Michigan put forward against Michigan State, Michigan looks like a 5-3, and 4-4, four and four, maybe absolute best-case scenario 6-2 and two team. And I think the likelihood is they're going to be 5-3 and three or 4-4. Four and four. And Harbaugh's going to lose for a sixth straight year against Ohio State because Ohio State looks an awful lot better than Michigan. And if you lose six straight times to your rival and you're being paid as if you are one of the best coaches in all of football, and Urban Meyer leaves and Ryan Day steps in and Ohio State doesn't even miss a step, I think it's fair for Michigan fans to look around and think, we are not living up to the expectation of the legend of Jim Harbaugh. And that is because, and I'm saying this without hyperbole, Jim Harbaugh is the most overrated coach in the history of college football. It's not the worst coach. Again, he's Bo Pelini. I think he's going to go 8-4. and four. I think he's going to go 9-3. and three. Every second or third year, he may blip up. And to be fair to Michigan, if Harbaugh had ever been able to find an elite-level quarterback, he might truly have been able to be a difference maker in that program. But it hasn't ever happened. And so if you think about what made Dabo Sweeney and Clemson elite, it was suddenly going out and getting who? Deshaun Watson. That's what took Clemson from good to great. Harbaugh has never been able to find that quarterback. And given the fact that that's his reputation, that he is a quarterback guru, he's never been able to get it done. He found Andrew Luck and brought him to Stanford. He hasn't had anybody a scintilla as good in six seasons now at Michigan. And eventually, you have to put that on Jim Harbaugh. So I think this is Harbaugh's last year. I think he will finish at Michigan, and both sides will mutually agree that it doesn't make sense for Harbaugh to continue, and he will go out and find an NFL job, and he is going to ride off into the sunset. I think that's going to be frustrating to him, but I don't see things getting better at Michigan. When you lose as a 24-point favorite, against your little brother in state. If you're not familiar with the Michigan-Michigan State rivalry, that's one that is going to sting for a long time for Michigan fans and Michigan alums. I know because I'm married to one of them. And so if you actually look at that performance by Michigan, this is a devastating loss for Jim Harbaugh. He is now 1-6 at home in his tenure at Michigan against Michigan State and Ohio State. One time in the big house, in the Harbaugh era, have they been able to enjoy a win over Michigan State or a win over Ohio State. Now, granted, we know he's 0-5 and trending towards 0-6 against Ohio State, but he hasn't been great against Michigan State either. And for Mel Tucker, that was a heck of a win in only his second game as the head coach of Michigan State to get beat by Rutgers and then get his team back up the next week to show up and absolutely find a way to beat Michigan. Props to Mel Tucker and everybody out there in the Spartan universe for a game that I think certainly stunned every Michigan State fan on the planet. 